All right, so now let's talk a little bit about, about matrices. Um, so again, or sorry, about inverses. So for regular numbers, recall that inverses are pairs of numbers that more or less kill each other and give you the identity. Take a look at this example. These are additive inverses, numbers that when you add them together, they undo each other and give you the additive identity. Multiplicative inverses are numbers that when you multiply together, basically kill each other and give you the multiplicative identity. So they're the yin and the yang. They undo each other when you perform that binary operation on them, and they give you the identity for that specific binary operation. Additive inverses give you additive identity. Multiplicative inverses give you multiplicative identity. And so too for matrices. We will say that matrices um, A and B are inverses, multiplicative inverses, if and only if, this is how you spell if and only if, A times B is equal to identity, and B times A is equal to the identity. If they kill each other and give you the identity, we will call them inverses of each other, okay? So here's an example. What would be the inverse of that? Well, to find the inverse of that, I would need to find another matrix here. Let's just call it A, such that when I multiply them together, I get the identity, 1, 0, 0, 1. If I could find that number here, then I could I could find the inverse of the, that matrix. Um, so same thing here. I want to know what that times what gives you the identity, being 1, 0, 0, 1. So here's, here's maybe I don't want to go into that de in detail right now, but here's a proposition. What if I told you those are those two are inverses? We could check to see if they're really inverses. Let's check. We All we do is perform the multiplication. We're going to do that row times that column. So the 2 times the 4, that gives you 8. Take away 7, that gives you 1. Then we'll do this row times that column. 7 times 7 is 14, and then the negative. That gives you zero, and so on and so forth. And these are indeed inverses of each other. So the answer is yes, these are multiplicative multiplicative inverses. If this guy is called A, then that one is called A inverse, sometimes written like this, A with a negative one. And we say that A times A inverse is equal to the identity. Okay. Similarly, you can check to see if these are inverses. Uh, multiplying this row times that column, that would give us how much? It would give us 3 times 4 is 12. Um, 12 and then um, negative 7. Actually, I think this should be... So this, let me just do that. That's 12 over 19 plus uh, 7 over 19 when you do this one times that one. Sorry, let me clean it up a little bit so it looks prettier. And in fact, that gives you set, uh, 19 over 19, which is equal to 1. Then we try the next one. This row times that column. The 3 and the 7 are going to give you 21, and the 3 and this 7 is going to give you 21, but this one's positive, this one's negative. That's going to give you 0 and so on and so forth. And so these, in fact, are multiplicative inverses of each other. That's how you check. That doesn't explain how we found them, but for sure it explains how, how we can check to see if two things are inverses of each other. We'll talk more about how to find them later. Okay, I want to emphasize this thing I said earlier. These things do not, the matrices do not commute. This part right here fails, and sometimes they don't have any inverse. Those two things fail. So I want to really, really emphasize that there's no commutativity for multiplication. There is for addition, but not for multiplication. Not all inverses, not all matrices have an inverse. There's no zero factor theorem, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But let me emphasize this one for now. So I took this matrix times that one. And then over here, I wanted to know, compare them, what happens when you switch them around? Should I get the same number? This would be analogous to thinking about, you know, in, in the real number line or in the real or real numbers. Let me just make a thinking bubble here. 
If I do 3 times 5 versus 5 times 3, what do I get? Well, if I do 3 times 5, I get 15. But if I do 5 times 3, I also get 15. So in the world of real numbers, it doesn't make a difference. Real numbers commute. the commute under multiplication. And I'm trying to um, play with these, this idea in the world of matrices. If I have a matrix here times a matrix there, and then I switch them, as I have here, will I get the same answer? And so we go on and we multiply these and check just for fun. It wouldn't prove anything if they happen to be the same, but it could prove that it doesn't work if they're different. So we start off with this row times that column. That would be a two, a two and a negative three. Then I do this row times that column. That would be a four and a negative 15. And similarly for the bottom, I get a negative 1 and a negative 4, and I get a negative 2 and a negative 20. Now, if I do it the other way, backwards, I get a, a 2 and a negative 2. Already, this is different. It fails miserably already, and I get 11 over here, and I get uh, negative 2 and positive 5, and I get negative 3 and negative 20. So these these matrices are totally, totally different. Uh, it's analogous to if the numbers, in real numbers, imagine if 3 times 5 was 15 and 5 times 3 was something totally, totally different. It can't happen in the real, or real numbers. It happens all the time in the world of matrices. Okay? Uh, also note that no matter how hard you try to find something here that gives you the identity, this will never happen. There is no inverse of this. Uh, does not exist. There's no A times, there's no nothing here that will fit such that when you multi multiply them together, you get the identity. By one, I don't really mean one. Sometimes people will write one, but what they mean is the identity, which is this one. If the context is clear that they were talking about a matrix, that's your, your quote-unquote one. And this will fail miserably in this case. Um, and it might be an interesting exercise to think about why that would fail. Um, we could just try all the possible matrices in the entire universe and test each one and see that they fail. Or it could be a little bit smarter about it and see why. Uh, suppose, let's just practice our proving techniques just for some. Fine. Suppose B is the inverse of A. B has to be equal to something like this. A, B, C, D. Then um, A times B must be equal to the identity. So that means that 0, 1, 0, 0 times A, B, C, D, numbers that I don't know, have to be equal to that. Right, that would mean that, well, I could multiply these things on the left. That would mean, um, I'm thinking here, that times that, that's zero A's and one C. Um, then I'm thinking this times that. Well, I'm thinking this times that. So I'm thinking zero B's and one D. So that would be a D. And then on the bottom, that gives me zero, and that gives me zero. So that tells me that now if these two matrices are the same, that has to be the same as that, that has to be the same as that, that has to be the same as that, and that has to be the same as that. That means that C must be equal to one, D must be equal to zero, zero must be equal to zero, and zero must be equal to one. Now, does anyone see a problem here? Uh, this leads to a clear contradiction here. There's no there's no value of A, B, C, and D that make 0 equal to 1. It's just not happening. And so this would be the symbol for contradiction. And therefore, uh, B does not exist. And I just proved that this matrix A has no multiplicative inverse in the entire universe of all matrices. There's no matrix that 
that could kill A and give you the identity. Okay, so just be careful. Everything changes in matrices. The commutativity, things don't have multiplicative inverses. Also, the zero factor theorem is, is uh, out of the question. See, um, if you have two real numbers and A times B is equal to zero, for example, you know, I tell you I have something here times something here is equal to zero. These couldn't be both non-zero. That would never work. Three times five is not going to be zero. At least one of them, one of them has to be equal to zero. Then it would work. That's why when you were solving equations such as x minus three times x plus five, you could exploit this fact and say, oh, x minus three must be equal to zero, or x plus five is equal to zero because of the zero factor theorem. And then you could go on and solve that equation. Yeah, none of that works here. You could have non-zero two numbers that are both non-zero. And they multiply together and give you zero. So, so the zero factor theorem fails in the world of matrices. Also, simple things like this, like a regular polynomial. Um, you know, you did this in high school, where you foiled this. The way you actually did it was something like this. I'll show. You, I'll go through the steps for this. If you have x plus y square, well, that would be x plus y times x plus y, right? And you could take this number, this whole quantity, and distribute it to the x and distribute it to the y. So that could become x plus y times x plus x plus y times y using the distributor law. That would become x times x plus y times x plus x times y plus y times y. And that could become um, x squared plus yx plus xy plus y squared. Now here's the difference between regular polynomials and matrices. In regular polynomials, sorry, in regular numbers, these two numbers are the same. Because for real numbers, x times y is the same thing as y times x. And so I could just combine these and say, um, by the way, this was the distributive law. I could prove this using good stuff from our action sheet, from this sheet. Distributive law, this was distributive law. This was definition of exponents. Here's the crucial part. This is equal to x squared plus yx plus yx. I changed this one right here into yx plus y squared, or I could change the other one into xy just so I can match that. Hold on, sorry. This becomes xy plus xy. So now I changed this one, and that would be by commutativity uh, law of multiplication. Right, and then I could just say x squared plus two xy's plus y squares. The trouble with matrices is that you don't get this step right here. They're not commutative. I just show you examples of matrices that don't commute. These guys fail miserably. So this step would fail in the world of matrices. And so in the world of matrices, the correct statement, for example, if you have a plus b squared, that would be a squared plus a b plus b a plus b square that would be true not this well it was it wasn't even true to begin with okay i meant to have a tutor all right so the point here is be careful everything that was true for real numbers does not necessarily translate to matrices okay that's the whole point of this another thing to look for is uh, solving equations in algebra and how does that compare with matrices let's say we could we wanted to solve this using super super careful steps back from algebra the thing that you would do you could do is you could slap an inverse on both sides i'll slap an inverse on this side i'll slap an inverse on that side um that would be cancellation law of multiplication i can multiply both sides by something the next step that i could take would be Maybe I can reassociate them. One third times three times x is equal to um, one third times ten, whatever. So that's associative law of multiplication, where I've taken these parentheses and I slided them this way to cover only the, the one third and the three. That's why it's called associative law of multiplication. And of course, um, these ones give you one because they're multiplicative inverse. 
multiply the inverses, and of course this gives you just x because that's the multiplicative identity. One doesn't change anyone when you multiply by it. Now it turns out how many of these we want to ask how many of these steps could you mimic in the world of matrices? If I have a matrix A times some other matrix, some unknown variable X. Wow, I'm running out of ink. Unbelievable. Let me pause this. <laughs> 